Log on, tune in, find out. Another good idea from Cambridge. Uh, this afternoon is um, Carl Simpson who's talking on moduli of local systems on the main mountain stacks. Okay, so thanks very much for, this, uh, for inviting me to give a talk. Um, also, to, it's a pleasure to be here at the Newton Institute, which is very convivial and uh, nice. Uh, okay, so uh, so I'd like to talk about uh, about sort of a, a little extension of the the theory of moduli of local systems. Which is uh, uh, you know the non-abelian Hodge theory. Which is mainly the, the Hitchin correspondence. Plus all of the extra structure. Uh, to the case, so. Uh, it can be extended to lots of different things, but so what I'd like to say is that it can be extended to the case of. Of let's say smooth proper Deline Mumford stacks. Uh, then I'll well, let me put it this in quotes, but fairly easily. And uh, sort of the, the advantage of this point of view. Uh, uh, Well, one, one advantage, at least, is that it allows us to discuss some open, some kinds of local systems on open varieties. <coughs> uh, without too much trouble. By too much trouble, I mostly mean, you know, Takaro Mochizuki's uh, uh, gigantic theory for, for open varieties, which is not very easy to, to, to work with. Uh, uh, which is not to say that it's just, I mean, that's the, the real thing you should be doing, I, I think. But, uh, but to sort of shortcut that and, you know, be able to say stuff a little bit more easily, uh, you can sort of replace that in some cases by the, the case of DM stacks. But also the uh, but also also we get some new kinds of examples. Uh, and, and in general, it, uh, it seems to be a good source of uh, things which may be. A good source of cases which may be easier to compute. Uh, if you take, you know, if you look at local systems on a smooth curve of genus G, if you take rank two local systems on a curve of genus two, it already has dimension six, and it sort of goes up from there. Uh, so to get stuff of fall, smaller dimension, you, uh, you need to go to something either either open varieties or or Deline Mumford stacks. So I'll try to explain that. Um, <coughs> well, let me just start off by explaining something about you know, basic definition of of Deline Mumford stacks. So doing Mumford stacks, or, uh, you know, from the point of view of what we're doing here, it's pretty much the same to talk about orbifolds <coughs> or in the title of the preprint, uh, I put the manifold. Uh, 
uh, I'll explain that there, you know, the, the Lean Mumford stack case is just a teeny bit more general than the classical definitions, um, which I'll explain in a minute. Okay, uh, so what's a what's a what's an overfold or a Lean Mumford stack or a Z manifold? Uh, so the basic idea is that is that it's like a variety. But where the local charts can, uh, let's say, uh, be glued to themselves, by automorphism, okay. you know, a variety is made up by gluing together local charts, uh, by gluing, but you glue one chart to another. Okay, what happens if you happen to take a chart and try to glue it to itself by an automorphism? That's what you get. I mean, that, that comes out clearly in the original definition of a V-manifold, for example. Um, so uh, so let, let me just say what, you know, the basic example here, and pretty much a good example for lots of applications, too. So, so the case of dimension one. <coughs> so suppose that, so let's look at dimension one. Smooth, smooth, proper. So let's call these DM curves if it's dimension one. Uh, okay. So, uh, in a, in a sense, which I'll explain in a minute, there, uh, a DM stack has a group. called the generic stabilizer. And let's assume that that's one for, for, for now. Okay. So if we assume that, so, so we look at, you know, dimension one smooth proper DM curves with trivial generic stabilizer, then the, they're just classified as follows. Then uh, these are the same as thing. Okay, these are and I'll give the notation. These are all of the form uh, x is equal to some y, uh, and then so we'll give this notation here. So this is a this is what's called a root stack. where y is a smooth curve. <coughs> uh, I'm working over C here, okay. Uh, y is a smooth proper curve, and y1 to yk are points, okay. And the ni are integers greater than or equal to 2. Of course, if you put n, you could put ni equal to one, but then that would not have any effect. So uh, let's not do that. Uh, now, what does this mean? Okay, the local chart for x, uh, and let me just say that this has a map to y. Okay. A local chart for x over uh, over a neighborhood of the point y i. And y is uh, is of the form is a disk with coordinate t such that t to the n i is equal to u, where u where u is the local coordinate for y at the point yi. Okay. So we're just talking about a ramified cover, basically. So we have this disk, uh, whatever. So, so this is a disk, but it maps by a double ramified cover to 
to the disk inside y. If n equals 2, for example. So this is, a, in general, an ni, NI to 1 ramified cover. Okay. And the, the group acting on the local chart here is uh, the, let's see. In fact, the, let's call this disk delta. Delta modulo the group uh, The, the, the local piece of X, of the Deline Mumford stack X, is the, what's called the stack quotient of the, of the disk divided by the group, uh, cyclic group of order Ni, which is operating by T goes to T, uh, T goes to mu. Where mu is a, uh, Ni truth of uh, unity. Uh, maybe I should put, you could put mu i here, that would be better. Okay. So just divide the disk out by the, by rotations by, by roots of unity. And of course the fixed point, the, the origin is a fixed point. <coughs> and so from this example we can see something important for what will follow, which is that, okay, let's let u equal i equal y minus the points. And of course, o over u, the, the local charts are just the uh, identities between x and y. Okay, so, so it's also it's also a subset of, y, of, of x. Okay. So we're going to have pi one of u. Let's choose a, choose a base point. Mapping into pi one of x. Well, let's call this x. Well, I haven't told you what this is, but okay, this is sort of the definition in this case. Okay. And the, the definition is that pi 1 of x is defined to be pi 1 of u modulo the relations gamma i to the ni equal 1. Which is to say when, if downstairs here, okay, so what's gamma i? Gamma i It's the path in Y which goes around the point YI. So it says that if you go around once here, if you try to go around once, when you lift that here, that won't actually lift to a path in the chart. But if you go around NI times, then that lifts to a path in the chart, uh, which can then be contracted. And so local systems on, on X are the same thing as local systems on U, let's call them L, with finite monogramy of order ni around yi. Okay. Just representations, re uh, so rep a representation of this group is the same as the representation of pi 1 of u, such that the, the monogram element goes, goes to a, something of order ni. Okay, so, so this is the basic example. Now, what, you know, how can you make a general definition which sort of uh, covers this basic example? Well, uh, so the, the, the sort of the next kind of more general basic example is suppose a phi is a finite group.
acting on a variety, let's say smooth. Smooth variety Z. Then we can form Z, then we can form the stack quotient Z modulo phi. And a good example is the case where, is in this case, okay. so in the previous example, if z mapping to y is a phi Galois cover, <coughs> with ramification of order ni, by which I mean ramification which locally looks like this guy. Uh, then z, then the stack quotient is equal to this Dillian Mumford stack x, which we discussed here. And more generally, the stack quotient is just take the local charge of z and use the elements of the group g phi to define the gluing functions. And of course, you get a stacky point exactly when you have a local chart which is a local chart near a, a point which has a stabilizer, then the, the stabilizer group of the point will act by automorphisms of that chart. Okay, so, so that's the case where you've got a chart which gets glued to itself. Okay. Uh, so, so now this example lets us uh, go towards the, the, the basic definition, which is, um, so, so we have a map from z into x, And x is the sort of the quotient of z by some relation. Okay. okay, but now what happens in this example, but what if phi acts trivially? If phi acts trivially, then the quotient is, uh, let's see, then, then x is actually just the same as z cross a uh, stack called b phi, where b phi is, is just the, the point quotiented out by phi. <laughs> So, th so this is sort of the new kind of thing which, you know, which is happening, which can happen here. And now, what I wanted to say is just that, it, okay, it's new in a certain sense, right, because it, uh, we haven't really defined this. But in fact, it's also not new in the sense that uh, what happens if you, uh, this guy actually occurs up here. So in, in the previous example, we have a B of Z modulo N, Ni is a substack of X, which is Y of, the, uh, it's a substack of this root stack located at the point Yi. Okay. And it, so in general, if you try to say, okay, you know, let's only look at group actions which are faithful, but if you take a faithful group action and but then restrict to a subvariety which is the, which has a stabilizer, if it's say the fixed point set of the group action, uh, then of course the group action will no longer be faithful. Okay. So, so you sort of have to, you're, you have to go to the case where the group might not act faithfully, and then this is sort of the opposite case. Uh, if the group acts totally non-faithfully, namely trivially, then the, the stack is just the same variety as Z, but with this, uh, with this thing, which is the generic stabilizer group, and so this, this is the, so, so with these examples, it's a sort of an example approach to the definition plus the, the basic things which happen. Okay. Now, what, what's the general definition? Okay, the definition is that, uh,
it's a one stack in groupoids. On, say, the side of schemes, let's say, of finite type, I guess, probably better, uh, over C with the atoll topology. Uh, let's see, call it, it X, such that there exists a map uh, Z to X. With Z being a, a scheme, let's, uh, I'm just taking finite type things, so it's scheme of finite type, and such that the relation, so that what's the relation? So R is Z cross X Z. Uh, so let's see, we want this to be a, a tall map. So you have to define what an ATOL map means, but that's pretty much the same as what I'm about to say here. Uh, this guy, the two different maps from here to Z are ATOL. Uh, is this supposed to be a representable map? Maybe. Uh, 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 sorry, all right, representable means that an Excel map of schemes. Uh, or to put it another way, it's a, it's a stack with the property that there exists a presentation like this, so that X is, is Z modulo of the relation R. Okay. Now, R here is actually a groupoid in the category of schemes. I mean, uh, R is the morphism object for a groupoid, and Z is the object object for a groupoid. I'm probably getting that still wrong. But, uh, uh. And then uh, X is separated if R mapping to, to Z cross Z is proper. And proper if any I won't write this down, but any, because this is supposed to be a discrete valuation ring and this is the fraction field, any map into here extends to a map spec A prime into X. Where this guy is a finite extension. So this is the, the, the classical separated cri uh, evaluative criteria of properness, except you have to be a little bit careful because, as you can see from the example uh, with the disk there, uh, if you have a map from a punctured disk into X, uh, for example, this punctured disk here, if you take out the origin, uh, away from the point, X and Y are the same. So you can have a map from the punctured disk into, into X, but it's not going to extend to a map from the disk, disk into X. Uh, it's just going to extend once you go to a finite cover. Okay, and then, then there's a theorem of... It's that this is equivalent to saying that there exists a proper map, a surjective map. Where Z is, let's say, a proper scheme. Now, so, so, so the sort of basic properties, um, I think that the, for me, the main basic property which sort of lets you understand what's going on is that uh, says that this, this example is pretty much the general example, uh, this example here. So if you have a if 
x is a separated finite type, I'll, I won't write finite type because everything is finite type here. If x is a separated finite type dm stack, then it has a coarse moduli space. Uh, x course with a map from x to it. And x course is uh, an algebraic space. A separated algebraic space. Uh, and locally, uh, I, I won't say. Uh, uh, this kind of has a universal categorical quotient property. Okay. To sort of define what it is uniquely. And locally over the coarse moduli space in the tall topology, I, I think this might even be true in the Zersky topology, but maybe we need to be careful because it's an algebraic space. So uh, let's say in the locally over x course in the Atal topology, x is a quotient stack, which is to say uh, there exists a say uh, there exists a map, an Atal map from u to x course, such that x cross over x course uh, u is of the form z divided by a group action, by a finite group action. <coughs> so this means that, that, in fact, you can choose charts for the Dillian Mumford stack, which really are the quotient by, by a group. Whereas a priori, it's just, a, by the definition, it's just a quotient by a groupoid. And uh, sort of a, a, a furthermore here, in the case of curves, uh, it's almost always in the case of smooth DM curves, it's almost always a, a global quotient. Uh, I think the only the only examples maybe I'm missing one, but I think basically the only the only counter examples, the only the only other cases are things which uh, which people call uh, drops. So a drop is a something like that. So it's a P1 with one point or football. Uh, this is American terminology, okay? <laughs> I guess I should. I don't know what's a rugby ball called. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, P1 with two points, okay? And in fact, okay, even if you take P1 with two points, uh, if the orders are the same, then of course that will be a quotient by P1 by uh, just a cyclic group action. So say P1 with two points, which with relatively prime orders. And in fact, in these cases, the fundamental group is trivial anyway. So, uh, so you can more or less say that for the cases where we want to look at the fundamental group, uh, you can just assume that, and, and if you're looking at a curve, you can pretty much always assume that it's a global quotient. <coughs> Let's see. Now, what happens? Uh, What happens if you take? What happens to pi one if you take? Uh, oh, first let me just say the definition of pi one. So, if we have a stack, if we have a DM stack, then let's call this Z modulo R. So, th so we have Z mapping to to X. And R is Z cross X Z. Uh, I guess what, what I didn't say here. Uh, when we say Z mapping to X, of course, Z is considered as a pre sheaf uh, as a pre sheaf of sets on the side of schemes wherever that is. Uh, maybe 
think I just erased it. Anyway, uh, yeah, here. Z is considered as a sheaf of sets on this site, uh, which uh, a set is a, is a discrete groupoid. Okay. So, so they're all living in the same world, and then we have a map. And the fiber product is in the fiber product is a fiber product of stacks of groupoids. So that means that, that an object of the fiber product is a, is, a, or is a pair of points in Z plus an isomorphism in the stack. So, so R is really the scheme of, uh, of isomorphism. So now if we've got all this, then we can form a simplicial scheme by taking z0 equals z, z1 equals r, and z2 is z cross x z three times, etc. Then we get a simplicial space uh, z dot top by taking the top the complex topological space, and then we get a uh, simplicial simplicial set, uh, which is this for each. Oh, uh, let's see. Eddie, for each integer k, we associate the singular simplicial set of the topological space zk, which is a bisimplicial set. And then we take the diagonal to get a simplicial bit. And then realize to get a topological space. Okay, so so that, that's I wrote. Okay, I wrote everything down. Uh, how to go from a DM stack to a topological space? Okay. Uh, you can do other things which are equivalent to that. I mean, I mean, you should do something which is homotopy equivalent to that. Okay. So this gives you the realization of X. Okay. So we can define the topological re realization. Of x, and, and so it has, so p say pi 1 of x, x is equal to pi 1 of the realization of x. If you have a point of x, then you get a point inside here. Okay, so on. Right there. And local systems on x are by definition local systems on the realization of x. Now, there's other ways of approaching this which are, are useful. Um, and in particular, there's a, a paper or maybe a series of papers by, by Nui No, notably, you can think of a loop in X as a collection of segments in Z whose endpoints. Are joined by elements of the relation scheme. I mean, uh, uh, if you have a loop in X, you can think of lifting it to 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 a loop in Z, but you might not be able to lift it completely to a loop in Z. But you can sort of lift it segment by segment. In fact, I think you can really 
go all the way around, but then you might get to, to, the, to the wrong point, basically. Uh, so, so you can define the pi 1 more explicitly that way. And then you have to see that, you know, for example, in the case of a curve, that that gives back what, uh, what, I, what I said before. Uh, let's see. Ah, right. So what was I going to say? So, so, so if x equals z quotient by phi, so then we have a map from z to x. And we also actually have a map from x to, to b phi. That's a little bit harder to see, but uh, z maps to just a point. Okay, so we can take the stack quotient of the point, which is b phi. And, and this is actually a fiber sequence. The fiber product of this stack with the point mapping to here is actually x. So we get uh, an exact sequence. Uh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Uh, Z. Th this is X. And Z is the fiber. Okay. So, and let's lift the point, the base point, up to Z. So, so the, the fundamental group of the stack is an extension of the fundamental group of the, of the upstairs guy bought by the group phi. You can do some other exact sequences. Um, maybe I won't write this down for lack of time, but uh, in, for example, in the curve case, uh, in the curve case, uh, when I said, you know, that we can classify DM curves uh, as being just root stacks. Um, that, that was under the hypothesis that the generic stabilizer is trivial. If the generic stabilizer is not trivial, then, uh, then, then you get a gerb. Okay, you should say what's a gerb. That may look, well, okay, maybe I'll do this. Okay. So in general, for a DM, In general, so the form x mapping to y, uh, I'll see, x mapping to, let's call this maybe x prime. And the fiber is a sort of a b phi. Okay. And so this is a gerb. There's a there's a group. This group is the is the generic stabilizer. So it's a B it's a phi gerb over over a root stack. And then you can also do a an exact sequence of fundamental groups for, for that guy. So you can pretty explicitly say what the fundamental groups are. Okay, uh, now, the, 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 the uh, good basic example in higher dimensions is, again, a root stack. So uh, uh, I'm not going to say in the, I'm not quite sure what the exact right generality to define this is, but let's just suppose d equals d1 plus dk is a strict normal crossings divisor. So these guys are smooth and they intersect normally and so on, then we can define inside in a smooth variety y, then we can define again x equals y d1 over n1 dk over nk. And here again the local charts So I'll give a local chart, say, at a point where they all intersect. Uh, so if we have local coordinates, 
course, if you have only some of the divisors, then you just take some of the coordinates. If you have local coordinates defining the di, then uh, locally, uh, the chart, the chart z is just the set of points, is the subvariety of y cross a1 to the to the k. Given by T i to the ni equals u i. In fact, it's just the fiber. It's just the product of the of the one-dimensional root stacks. And the group equals the product of these cyclic group acts. And x locally is the quotient. And those are good examples uh, of stacks. I mean, they're perhaps the, the most useful one. And here again, well, maybe I not write this down again, but this explains the uh, what I was saying about the application to open varieties. Okay, <coughs> if we take u equals y minus d, then pi one of x is equal to pi one of u. Modulo again the relations which are gamma i to the n i equals 1. So local systems on x are the same thing as local systems on u with finite order monodromy around the, the divisor components at infinity. And also z is smooth. Here, here's a little glitch. I mean, here's a little thing which you, you know, you have a little remark that you sh should notice, which is that it's not a good idea. If you have a normal crossing divisor, it's not I mean, a good idea. I mean, uh, it doesn't work out quite as well if you take, try to take the root stack of the full divisor d. Because there you'll get something singular. So uh, you want to sort of take each component and take the ramified cover of each component separately. If you, take, if you just take a, an n-fold ramified cover along D, then you'll get some kind of conical singularity at the crossing point. So this, this roughly speaking, corresponds to a map from the local, the local complement, the pi 1 of the, of the complement of the divisors locally is, is a product of copies of z. And here you, this maps to, to this group. If you, if you map that to just a single z mod n, then your, the chart is no longer smooth. I mean, you can do that too if you want, but you don't get a smooth. OK, so now what, what do I want to say about this? It's just that uh, we have a lemma. Say smooth. If, if X is a smooth separated proper DM stack, then then there exists a map from Z to X, where Z is a smooth pro projective variety. Not necessarily connected. Okay. Where z is a smooth projective variety, and if z prime contained in z is the open set where f is a tall, then z prime covers x. Okay. So of course you can't get a you get, can usually not get a case where you have a a tall map from a smooth projective variety. That would be the case of a global quotient of a smooth variety by a group, but that's usually not the case. But you can get the case where uh, you have a projective variety and uh, it has an open set where f is a tall, and that open set covers x. So for this, uh, this, this uses a basically This is used as a result by Renault and Peskin, which allows you to blow up. If you have a if you have a algebraic space, it allows you to blow it up uh, 
you know, if you have an algebraic space with a, with a quasi-projective variety inside it, you can blow it up to resolve singularities and make it become projective by staying away from the subguy. That's what allows you to get surjectivity here. You can modify it. You can take, you can take a, your chart, sort of complete it in some way. Or you can take, you know, the original charts were open. Okay. You can sort of complete them in some way so that it maps to X. And then blow up in such a way that it becomes projective. Uh, and then, then, use the, then use a root stack to make sure it actually maps to, to, to X. Okay, now what can we do with this? Okay, using this. We can make a resolution by smooth projective varieties. So let's take Z0 equals Z. Then let's take Z1. Let's take it mapping to, to Z cross X and Z. Okay, this is just, again, a, a space smooth, uh, I guess, algebraic space proper. But again, we can choose a smooth projective variety, which maps trajectively to here. And then continue in that way. Uh, to continue here, you just sort of apply Deline's procedure. Uh, so from basically, I mean, this is included here. Here we're just applying. Applying the procedure in Deline's Hodge 3 paper. Okay. And then Now let's just say do some notation here. So eta is going to be a, some kind of local system. So either so there's I mean different notational schemes, but Bilbo or, or Hitchin, uh, or Duram, or Betty, or we can maybe call this Hodge, which is the contains uh, is lambda connections, or Deline Hitchin, so this is the twister space. And then we have M eta of x g, so let's say g is some group. Uh, so I'll, I'll take a complex group. So uh, in some cases, I guess you can do a real group, but uh, I'm not saying anything about that. Um, so I'm like, say, reductive group. Uh, I mean, I'm usually thinking of GLN here, so if I say something that's not true for g, but only true for GLN, that's possible too. Um, so this is the moduli stack of eta type local systems. Okay, on X. And the point is that you can just extend, this extends to the case of X, the Deline Mumford stack. By setting M uh, equals the two, let's say, limit, I guess. The two limit of the diagram. Uh, and in fact, since since these guys are one stacks, it suffices to go up to M2 here, to Z2. <coughs> so 
what does this really mean? So, so an object here. is just a local system here, plus an isomorphism phi here, such that, say, p1, let's say, p01 star phi, uh, maybe I'm missing up the order here, p12 star of, e of phi should be equal to p02 star of phi. So once you have a, uh, uh, okay, once you have that, once you have a simplicial scheme resolving your, your guy, then you can just define the modular space of local systems. Uh, uh, so, so, I mean, this is, you know, it's a theorem that this is true in, if you take the Betty case. Betty being just real topological local systems. So the, the stack of local systems on, on, on the lean Mumford stack, which in that case means representations of pi 1 of the topological realization, that is, is the two limit of the stacks of local systems on the pieces. And then you can just sort of take that as the definition for all the other guys. And no, actually, to do that, you didn't really need to use this lemma because you could have just taken any smooth projective variety mapping to x by a surjective map. Okay. And sort of cohomological descent kind of tells you that, that that's going to calculate the, the homotopy type of, of x. But I guess, uh, I mean, I'm not 100% sure that there's actually any need for this lemma, but I mean, it, it does seem to make it a little bit more transparent, the fact that in fact, if we take, say, say Higgs bundles, on X, or by definition, then Higgs bundles on Z dot, so meaning one of these guys, and here we're including the conditions semi-stable and the turn classes are zero. But in fact, those are also can also be seen as as really, you know, vector bundles plus uh, theta and so on on the DM stack X. Because of the fact that that I mean, I mean this guy is not really a covering of, of X. It augments towards X. It's not really a atoll covering of X because uh, you know there's it's only it's only atoll over some open set. But if you restrict your guy to, to the Z prime, then it does give you a something with descent data down to X. So you really get a bundle on, on, on X. Uh, let's see. Now let me just make a remark here. Which is the, okay, uh, so we can define this, the category of Higgs bundles defined in this way becomes the same as the category of Higgs bundles on X, but we have to define semi stability on X is defined to be that, that E theta restricted to any curve. or see a smooth projective curve. Because the, the, the point is that we're working here in the case of a proper DM stack, so we're not actually assuming that it has any property of being projective. And in fact, I mean, it's a priori not even clear what it means for a DM stack to be projective. Okay. Now, you can imagine a couple of different definitions. You can imagine, okay, let's say that the coarse moduli space is projective. Uh, then there's also a, a guy, I think his name is Neuroni, Maybe. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Who has a definition he's of? A, the definition is not his actually. He's the definition he got from a paper of Andrew Crash. Okay. And then he uses the projectivity of Andrew to define. Uh, okay. So, so they're, they're, they have some notion of projectivity, which is more complicated. Uh, and so I'm not quite sure. So you can probably make that work and you know define some kind of semi-stability and so on. Uh, you know, which I think is an interesting question because. Uh, that lets you look at vector bundles, say, with 
with turn classes different from zero. But if you're looking at things with semi-stable with turn classes equal to zero, then semi-stability is supposed to be independent of the choice of the polarization um, and, and is equivalent to just saying semi-stable when you restrict to any curve. Okay. This is sort of strong, maybe poly, uh, I'll see, plurisemi semi-stable or something like that, I might call that. I'm running out of time here, but uh, so that's just to say that you can kind of do the theory, the, the whole local system theory, uh, in this case, and you sort of get it for free, uh, essentially for free. So you have to you have to play around a little bit with this case of the simplicial simplicial scheme, and so if you want to rigidify things by choosing base points, then you have to be a little careful about how you choose the base points. Uh, notably, you should be, you know, you should start off by choosing a lot of base points so that you get base points in all the different connected components of everything here. Then you have to analyze a little bit what happens when you try to, you know, take out those base points one by one and try to get back down to a moduli, moduli stack or, or, and then, you know, you can, by doing that you can prove that the, the moduli stack has a universal categorical quotient, which is a moduli space, whose points are our reductive representations. Okay. And then, uh, you know, all, all the basic properties still hold, so for example, uh, this is hyper hyper Taylor on on the smooth points, and, and you know you have the M you have the the Riemann Hilbert correspondence, the the Hitchin correspondence, and so on. And that, that all just kind of works by, you know, saying that it works on the simplicial scheme. Uh, I forgot to... Um, yeah. Let's see. So, uh, yeah. Now, what I just wanted to say, I mean, to finish here... Uh, is that, so, okay, so, so, so this, the, this up till now the theory was, you know, just everything works the same way. So now in what, in what sense do, do you get something new here? So, new phenomenon, uh, I guess for those of you who are going to the conference in two weeks, I'll be discussing this case a little bit more. But so, so for example, so if y equals p1 and x is equal to y, So X is a root stack over P1. Okay, so local systems, so M M X L N can also be thought of some kind of a parabolic local systems or whatever. So in the case of so for in particular, for the case of parabolic Higgs bundle, okay, so one's well, in fact, strongly parabolic Higgs bundle. Then the, the moduli space decomposes <coughs> in a disjoint union of components. <coughs> corresponding to the conjugacy classes. Of the so in, in this case, it's the order 
finite order. Local monitoring. Okay, so you know the local monitoring transformations have finite order, so their eigenvalues are roots of unity. Then you can say, you know, what's the multiplicity of each eigenvalue that determines the conjugacy class. And and that so you get a disjoint union of, of spaces depending on the choice of conjugacy classes. And for some <coughs> For some choices of conjugacy classes, there exists no parabolic. <laughs> I guess I'm well. I'm skipping over something here, which is that there's a correspondence between uh, local systems on, or you know, bundles or whatever, on the on the root stack, and vector bundles on Y with parabolic structure at the point. So there, are, for some choices of conjugacy classes, there exists no parabolic stable. Or even semi stable <coughs> bundles. Which is to say that, that in terms of DM sex, there's just no stable, uh, semi stable vector bundles. <coughs> on the on the stack X. <coughs> Uh, w w with those local conjugate classes. In fact, when you have a vector bundle on X, you also get an, it's, not the mo it's no longer a monitoring transformation, but you get an action of the, of the finite group on the fiber of the vector bundle. So you can again decompose that way. And so this is a case where you know, the phenomenon that we saw on, I guess that was Tuesday, right? It no longer holds. So that the, the minimum of the Hitchin functional. So for these for these components of the moduli spaces, minimum of the Hitchin functional consists of things consists of Higgs bundles with theta different from zero. The phenomenon where on a compact curve where you say if you have a minimum of the Hitchin functional then the theta has to be equal to zero. So e even for GLN C. I in this case can, can no longer be true, de depending on the, the, the weights. The, uh, there will be, there, I guess probably always, will be some weights for which there do exist stable bundle. In that case, the minimum will be, uh, it will be the stable bundle. Uh, but there exists some components in this case where, where the minima have, uh, have theta different from zero. Uh, let's see, so that was, maybe I'll stop. Any questions? This correspondence is between the three different moduli spaces. Usually, you have to do some analysis, right? Mm -hmm. the system, the harmonic metric, and so on. Mm -hmm. How do you deal with that in this uh, sort of general context? I mean, for the parabolic thing, I, I understand. I think but for these other general situations, what do you do? Well, that, uh, that was kind of the point of why I was interested in. In looking at this whole thing with the simplicial space and so on, uh, because actually you don't need to do any further analysis here. You can just apply the fact that you know the correspondence over Z, which is a smooth projective variety, uh, and then that just gives you the correspondence over the. Uh, and in fact, I think you can even you can get a harmonic metric. In fact, that way, because you have a harmonic metric on Z, and it satisfies the you know it satisfies the descent. You have a descent cocycle. Uh, so let's see, I guess, maybe not the metric, but at least the, the connection, the, D, the the operators to give a harmonic bundle, um, those will be preserved by the, by the cocycle phi. So they'll descend to, to, to x. Um, and, and I mean, that's one of the reasons why you'd be interested in having a map z with the property that 
with the property that z prime surjects onto x, where this is a tall. Because if you just kind of chose a, any old, you know, any old covering in the in this in the proper surjective topology, then you wouldn't necessarily be able to get any kind of good object on x that way. But here you can just descend. You can restrict your guy to here and then descend it back down to x. Uh, so then, then of course, you can ask the question also: uh, Could instead of doing that, could I just do the analysis on the Lean Mumford stack? So uh, it seems likely that that probably should work. It, you know, you have to have a Kähler metric on the linear number second. And that seems to make sense. You know, what's the Kähler metric? Even better sense than it makes, than it, than it is to say what it means to be projective. Because the Kähler metric is just sort of a local analytic thing. Uh, but I didn't, I didn't do that, so. So you may occasionally mention that this was the one stack. And uh, if, for instance, you said, well, here we can stop here because after all, this, uh, do, do you expect, in principle, this would work whenever the n stacks are, are, are alive and running? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think so. I think you know, the, uh, if you're looking at you know some kind of non-abelian cohomology n stack, then you should be able to go out to like n plus one or n plus two or something like that. Um, so you, you don't think this has anything specific to do with the fact that there you are stopping at the if you have uh, I don't think so, but you know, okay, you'd have you'd want to look at that because you know uh, we're looking at we're look, when we're saying this about the harmonic metrics and so on, we're really using the start of the resolution. Um, and so, so you can ask. So I think you can ask. You know, what kind of good properties can you get for the rest of the resolution? Which I didn't try to get any good properties. I just said apply the method that you get in Deleen's Hodge three. Um, uh, where's John? John has a, a nice thing, which is not uh, on a slightly different topic, which is how to get a nice resolution of a geometric stack, n stack. But maybe those techniques would uh, apply here to get some kind of nicer resolution where you can, uh, you know, do you have sort of an a tall resolution sitting inside your, your, your other one? Won't you need some kind of a resolution of the Keller identity? I mean, you need the Keller identity somewhere, right? I mean, you never touch the Keller identities here. No, I'm just saying here that the, the since you have the, the the correspondence over over z and it's sort of nicely functorial and everything that you get it over x. Um, I mean, if you want to take cohomology, right. uh, if you want to do an n stack, you have to take cohomology. No, but you know, I think uh, you know that, that's what's happening in Hodge three anyway. In fact, what, what I, one thing I didn't say was that you can. X doesn't really need to be smooth. I mean, it could be singular or even forget about X altogether. You can do, you can just take a, a, a simplicial scheme, basically. You know, a simplicial smooth projective variety. And, you know, Deleen's Hodge 3 tells you how to do, you know, how to do Hodge theory for that. Um, and I, I guess, uh, so uh, uh, John Pridham actually has, in his paper, uh, in one of his papers, has a, you know, a, a section saying you can do non abelian Hodge theory on a, on a simplicial variety. So. Uh, I, I put that in as a reference on the published or in the in the one the paper will be coming out. Um, so, uh, so yeah. So I think you know. Then, at what point would you really want to be doing some kind of analysis on your Dwayne Mumford tag? I'm not sure about that, but as I said, I didn't actually do that. So. So when you study Higgs bundles but with a uh, real reductive Lie group, mm -hmm. uh, for example, if it is uh, real maximally split, then you have the Hitching components in which also the minima has no vanishing uh, its field. Mm -hmm. And these components, uh, it is known that they, they are extremely relevant from the, geomet from the geometric point of view of the curve. So do you expect these components in... in, in uh, I guess so. I think, I, I, yeah, I think, I mean, I think that would be interesting to look at how that works in, in these cases. I mean, the, you know, the, the interesting case, the interesting first case seems to be this, where you take P1 and take a root stack on P1. Um, yeah, I think it, it would be good to, to try to understand. I mean, so then there must be something combinatorial going on in the, the relationship between the monodromy transformations that you're re requiring here and the group that you're looking at. I um, mean, the other thing to say is that uh, this parabolic thing only works for the group GLN, and already for the for complex for other complex groups, there's this whole theory of parahoric structure. Uh, 
which, which you need to do to get a correspondence between uh, bundles on the stack and, and principal bundle. Uh, so I don't know what, what kind of extra stuff you need to, to, get, to com combine real stuff and parahoric stuff and so But uh, yeah, I, I think uh, but I'll be talking a little bit more about this in some special case in two weeks. And uh, I think that, you know, the, the set of real points, when, when the parabolic weights cross a wall, then the set of real points actually gets some singularities. Uh, so something strange is happening in that case, uh, which I don't quite know what it is, in fact. But, um, but yeah. Any more questions? I just want to make a comment that actually this, what you just said, for real as well as other complex groups, is Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I, I, even in the in the parabolic case. Ah, oh, okay. Is that is that come out yet? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, uh, do you guys have like an archive treatment or something about it? Ah, no. ah, okay, okay. Oh, great. Ah, cool. The case of Lincoln, we thank the speaker again.